Hey there, friends. How's it going? So today we're looking at Into the Mystic by Van Morrison. Uh, I'm going to give you a sort of quick grab-and-go lesson for this one. I'll talk about the chord shapes, both the simple ones you need. Also talk about some common modifications to spice up some of those chords. I'll show you a few different strumming patterns, as I usually do, including a nice uh, gnarly little tab for the intro if you want to capture Van Morrison's full sound. And I also have a handful of little licks and fills. Uh, some of these are sort of tackling the vocal melody. Others are looking at the horn riff. Another one is looking at the E minor fill you hear in the chorus. And then also a nice little walk down you can do in the verse. Uh, it's just a tip of the iceberg, but it'll get you started and really putting some uh, flair and sprinkles and flourish on top of things here. Uh, let's get into it. I'll show you all this and more. All the resources I have for this lesson include a link to my song sheet, which is available for a separate purchase, and also all my additional materials. I have a whole strumming guide available for this song. It's a separate lesson. It looks at 16th notes. It has a play-along track you can use. It has some strumming audio samples and some exercises. So if you need help going deep with the strumming, I've got you covered there. But let's get going with the, the, the big picture of broad strokes of this song and have some fun. Okay, so Van Morrison, Into the Mystic, third fret capo, if you want to play along with Van Morrison. So put your capo in the third fret, use the chords I show you here. In this lesson, I'm going to do no capo, just in case you don't have one. Uh, it happens to suit my voice better as well, right? But if you're gung-ho for capo three, see my strumming guide for this song, because I do use capo three on that one and kind of capture the authentic vibe. So now that we know that, uh, the four chords that make up the, the majority of the song are just C, okay, are G, our E minor, and our F chord, okay? Now, I'm never really playing this full barred six string version of F, so if you can't play this, don't worry about it. You can just use the middle four strings. That's kind of what I do. You could also use a baby F or an F major seven. I have a few different videos showing you these simpler voicings of F major if you need help with those, okay? A couple other notes I'm gonna get to a little bit later. For the C, I do have a note for the, you know, the C sus two is effectively our C chord with our middle finger raised up. And we're always gonna use this when we're on the C, right? We're strumming. Right? And we're gonna sort of go to that C sus two, get some of those rapid 16th note strums, and then return to the C. So think of the C sus two as a sort of modification of the C, right? Okay? The other one I wanna note is when we're on the G, Going to that G7 is gonna really be our friend. If you're able to do it, basically third, second, open, 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 first is one way to play G7. You also could do third, second, third, open, open, third, right? Basically this note, when you're playing that with the G major triad, it's gonna add that uh, real kind of tension which begs to resolve to the C major. It kind of makes that resolve sound a lot better, right? It's a typical dominant seven resolving to the one. It sounds good. So G7, if you're able to do it, but no worries if not, just stick to a regular G and you'll be in good shape, okay? So let's look at the structure of this song. Big picture, it looks like this. Nothing too complicated here. The intro is just a bunch of C. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's look at the verse and chorus so we can get strumming with things here, okay? Uh, eight measures each, okay? The verse is just going between C and G. That's it, right? Four measures of C, two measures of G, and then back to two measures of C, and then that repeats a few times. Now, um, here's how to think about this. Every measure has four counts in it, right? 85 beats per minute will match Van Morrison's tempo. So basically, uh, C and two and three and four, and C, two and three and four. This is the tempo, kind of slow, right? But when you add that faster strumming, it's gonna speed up a little bit, right? And then we go to the G, yeah, the bonnet boat was one as we sailed into the mystic two and three and four and one and two and three. So if we did all down strums, we were born before the wind, right? Maybe sneak in some filler strums. Oh, so younger than the sun. Okay, get ready for that G and G and two and Three and four and G and two and three and four and C. Okay, so that's all we're gonna need for the verse. Now again, some of those tips. Sneak in some of that C sus two. Okay, basically you're gonna do that in the gaps. You sing a line. After the singing, you keep strumming C for a while. Sneak in that C sus two and then sing the next part, right? And then uh, I'll, I'll play this in one second so you can hear what I mean. Look at that first line right after, you know. We were born before the wind, where those dots are. Also younger than the sun. Now here, when we go from the C to the G, 
Nice little walk down you can do here, right? So you're in your, your C shape, right? You're gonna just do a second fret to open on the fifth string. And I'm doing a pull off there, where I'm just sort of pulling my finger off in a way where I'm kind of going down. It's hard to explain, but you wanna create that tension. And if you do it right, it just creates a nice little down the steps really quick to get to the G, okay? You also could just pick it individually. Okay, and on that second G, if you want to get to the G7, you can. No pressure, no rush, though. Let me play through that verse with all this thrown together, okay? Ready? We were born before the wind. C sub 2. It's also younger than the sun. Walk it down. Yeah, the bonnet boat was G7 as we sailed into the misty. Okay, C sub 2. Okay, now that's all you need for the verse. Now I'm just doing there a simple down, 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 down. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And... Okay, that's a simple strum we can use. All right? One, Two. It's basically just strumming on the quarter notes with lighter strums in between. Now here's the deal. If you want to do the sort of full strum that I have written in my song sheet, I like to do a down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. Again, if you need help with the strumming, see the other lesson I made that already tackles this, where I have these exercises, I have multiple strumming patterns, with audio samples of each, right? It really lets you dive in. But if we were to do, you know, that pattern, uh, C, C, right? And it's the last couple strums. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Okay? Uh, add in that C sus2 at the end if you want there, right? So that's gonna get you started with the strumming, but feel free to let the sort of, the, the vibe and the spirit sort of take you and just add in extra filler strums on 16th note tempo and you're gonna sound good. See my other lesson if y'all need help there though, okay? That's gonna be the verse. Now the chorus, it's only eight measures as well. We're gonna have E minor for one measure, then F for one measure, okay? Then we go to C for two measures, two and three and four and C and two and three and four E minor two and three and four two F two and three and four now two measures of G and this begs for that G7 now I wanna rock your chips is so okay sorry I got carried away there um, yeah so that's the progression let me use this pattern again down down up up down 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 up down down, up, up, down, 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 up. Yeah, when that fog won't blow, I will be coming home. Yeah, when that fog won't blow, I want to hear it. I don't have to fear it. And I Gypsy soul. Okay, that's basically it. That second measure of G, if you can go to the G7, it's gonna sound really good, of course. Now, um, one thing I'll say is that E minor, little fill you can do. Now, this doesn't really work well when you're just playing by yourself. It's kind of hard to integrate this into the strumming. But if you're playing along with the practice track that's over at my website, or you're playing along with Van Morrison or a friend, one of you really should you know, do this if you can. So basically, while the E minor is playing, we're gonna just be alternating between the third string and the first string. Okay, open to open, second to second, fourth to third, okay? Whoops. Okay, if you listen to Van Morrison's version, you can hear that as an accompaniment guitar piece that's being played. It's a really cool thing to do over that E minor. But otherwise, uh, that's what you need for the chorus, and then you go back to the verse. When you get back to that verse, you're flying at full flight, so you want to keep those 16th notes, right? Oh, one E and the two E and the three E and the N 
your gypsy soul Just like back in the days of old Let's walk it down In magnificently we will float into the mystic Alright y'all, the horns are coming up Let me show you how to do this Let me do it again Okay. This is a little uh, acoustic guitar approximation of what you hear in Van Morrison's uh, album, of course, with those iconic horns. The main idea here is strum your C. The, these highlighted notes are the melody, the part you'd hum. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, we're just going from uh, the thinnest three strings only. Open, open, third to first on the second string. Okay, second fret of the third string, and then repeat that and go back to that C note on the second uh, string there, okay? So basically, you're gonna keep your hand in your C shape at first. You're gonna have to move your pinky onto the third fret of the second string. And then you're gonna have to move your middle finger to the second fret of the third string, okay? Take this really slow at first. And the suggested practice I have is these are all notes coming from the C major pentatonic scale. I have a whole separate lesson teaching you that scale and the five most common major keys in open position. Absolutely worth knowing because you're gonna see that all these sort of riffs and stuff um, and all these melodies are coming from that scale a lot of the time in most songs. Okay, so you can repeat that if you want. Da -da -da. G7, or G, then we go to the G7. Then do the horn riff one more time. <laughs> Flubbed it there, but you get the idea. Then you quiet it down. Because when that fog horn blows, you know I will be coming home. So the dynamics in this song are great. So that's one little riff you can do. The only other riff I didn't show you here, this isn't really a guitar one that you would play while you're playing, it's more for uh, helping you sing, is the vocal melody. Okay? If you need help singing, you need help for reference what those first opening notes are that you sing, right? Okay, second fret to open on the third string. It's an A to a G. We Born, second fret of the fourth string, it's an E, right? Go to the C root note, B4, up to the fourth string open, which is a D, and then back to that E. Now, the thing you should notice here, or that the, I wanna call out, right? Because you have to learn it before you can notice it. These are the five notes in the C major pentatonic scale again. Okay, uh, as far as scale degrees or intervals, if C is our one, right, one, two, three, five, six. That's all the major pentatonic is. It's those sort of intervals or scale degrees repeating, right? We were born before the wind, oh, so younger than the sun. Okay, that'll get you started with the vocal melody. I would challenge you to try to work out the rest of the vocal melody using the C major pentatonic or just a C major scale if, if you find you're missing some notes there. But um, I have all those written out at the bottom of my song sheet and uh, you'll be in good shape to add those little bits of flourish flair or, or get up to speed singing. The last thing I wanna show you here is just strumming the intro. Now I cover this a lot more in detail in my other lesson that I did. So again, see the link in the description, but the quick version looks like this. I got swept away there by that little walk down. But these two measures are what I wanna show you here, okay? You're gonna start off by strumming a C sus two and then hammer on to that um, regular C chord immediately after you do that first strum. Okay, just practice that first measure by itself. You're basically gonna start with a C sus two And that last up, down, up, down, up, or down, up, down, up, whatever it is, the last three or four down, up, down, up strums are gonna be a C sus two also. And then you're gonna start the second measure with another C sus two and hammer that on, 
okay? So if I just repeated the first measure here, forget about that percussive slap for one second, just repeat the first measure. up, down, up, down to end the measure and start the next measure is a crucial part because you want to get that C sus2 vibe in there. Now the second measure is the exact same, but we have this percussive slap, right? It's happening on the two count. Now this is a tricky technique, but I have a couple different videos teaching it. So check those out if you need help with this. So the quick version is if you were to put your palm right near the, the sort of saddle of the guitar on the strings, and strum. See how the strings don't make um, any notes because you're deadening them? The idea is you want to bring your hand down, put your hand in that sort of muting position or dampen the strings, and then strum the strings. But the real challenge here is coordinating your hand motion so that you get a flick. You get a flick of a strum, but, you're, but it's hard to basically get a flick and have your hand there waiting. So you kind of have to get your hand there right before the pick comes down. See my other lesson, I sort of break down this technique. But here's what this would sound like. Now the first measure he doesn't do it, but the second measure he does, then he just repeats the second measure. So listen for this. Okay. Now then the, the bass comes in, the drums comes in, and at that point, the full band is playing along with Van Morrison, and then he just kind of backs off from that percussive strum, and he just enters a regular strum I showed you earlier. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 okay? Or something like this. This is what I like to use. Now, uh, a couple practical tips for this. You might find that just doing the, the percussive hit by itself almost like kills your momentum and makes it hard to get back in the groove. So if that's happening, my suggestion, is that you get used to the 16th note strumming motion, right? Down, up, 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 one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And you don't be afraid to use up and down strums liberally, sprinkle them in, right? As you're strumming, and you can do them before that percussive hit and also after. So check this out, you'll see what I mean. Watch for the extra strums that I'm sneaking in. I'll do it for the G too. Specifically, it's the a regular up strum just before the percussive hit, I think goes a long way in keeping you locked in on the groove, right? And you also can do additional muted strums. The main idea there is you want to find a, uh, a groove, a balance. You don't want to be losing the rhythm. You want to keep things moving at a steady tempo in a way that works for you. You don't have to really do this percussive hit either if you don't want to, okay? But again, see my other lesson because all those audio samples I have are going to be super helpful for you there. So that's going to be it for this lesson, y'all. Um, I hope you find this helpful. Again, if you want to get my song sheet, this is print friendly and it's licensed and it's available for separate purchase, right? Uh, due, due to copyright and licensing reasons, that's how you get it. Um, but if you want to access all of my uh, members only stuff, it's available on my site, songnotes.net. That includes uh, my strumming guide showing you some of that 16th note stuff, access to my practice track where you can put this on, follow along with the chord changes, whether you do a simple strum or something more complicated, that's available for you. I have a full playthrough with the capo on third fret. And I also have all these strumming patterns recorded as audio and some exercises as well. So a lot of uh, members only stuff available on my site, songnotes.net. That's where all my lessons live. That's 100% my site. No one else's stuff is there. So if you like my lessons, I think you'll like everything else on my site. Even though, you know, musical taste will vary from, from uh, song to song, artist to artist. You might not dig all the songs I do lessons for. But I have tons of instructional lessons. I have some courses. I have hundreds of these instructional PDFs. Now, these are not my song sheets. These are things teaching you tips and techniques and theory and warm-up exercises and all my course downloads and jam tracks. 
Those are all available to members over on my site, songnotes.net. And I want to bring it up just in case uh, you're looking for something to go deeper with learning guitar. And it also uh, literally keeps my lights on around here. And it is my true life's work at this point and labor of love. So thank you for all of you who are supporting me uh, with membership, whether it's monthly or annual. Uh, it's tremendously appreciated. All of you posting in the Song Notes community forum, right? It's a great members only place to, to ask questions, share music, and ask for feedback. Um, it's really appreciated, and I hope you all found this helpful. So um, everything you can find at my website, songnotes.net, and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson, guys. Take care, and until then.